The Roanoke Canal is no more, but its rich history still lives here in Roanoke Rapids at the Roanoke Canal Museum and Trail. What we have here is a series of canals that run down the fall line. Rodney Pierce oversees right cultural like resources in the city and also oversees the museum. He tells visitors about the importance of rivers as a means of transportation in the early years of our country. But there was an obstacle at this location along the Roanoke River, a 90-foot drop in elevation, creating the rapids that gave the city its name. And they had to figure out a way to get around that, so the canal was built to navigate around this very dangerous area called the Fall Line. A series of three locks allowed boats to gradually be lowered from the highest elevation to the lowest, so they could continue on downriver. The museum offers a hands-on demonstration of how the locks work. The boats of choice were known as bateaux, the French word for boat. They were large wooden flat bottom boats used to haul all sorts of goods. There are a couple of them on display at the museum. Horses and mules pulled the bateaux through the canal along an adjacent towpath. In the 1800s, railroads made the canal and bateaux obsolete. A group of investors bought the canal with a new use in mind. What these gentlemen did was they started using the canal to generate power. In 1900, they built a hydroelectric plant where the middle lock of the canal was located. The locking system allowed the water to run down. They knocked a hole in the wall downstairs. The water came into the building, turned the turbine, which turned the generator. The plant powered corn, cotton, and lumber mills downstream in Weldon until the 1920s. The Roanoke Canal Commission was later created to preserve the building and the remnants of the canal. They were put on the National Register of Historic Places in 1976. The city took over the building and turned it into a museum in 2007. Its mission is education. We are in a rural county, an economically challenged county, and uh, we want to develop our economy. And to do that, you have to have education. You have to prioritize education. And that's what we prioritize here at the museum. The museum uses a variety of interactive and traditional exhibits to tell the story of the Roanoke River Valley, the construction of the canal, and its transformation into a source of hydroelectric power. There are also exhibits about the Roanoke River itself and its fishery. American Shad and Striped Bass leave the Atlantic Ocean, swim across Alpha Wild Sound. The community turned the old canal towpath into an eight-mile recreational trail that runs along the Roanoke River from Roanoke Rapids to Weldon. There are multiple access points between both towns for hiking and biking. Along the way, you can see a variety of wildlife and views of the river. Did you need a bag, ma'am? The museum's goal is to help people get a sense of the area's history and the importance of the canal to the area's economic development and growth. Because canals were very important during the early uh, stages of our country. The museum's close proximity to I-95 brings in visitors from other parts of the state and country, but Pierce says the most important visitors are local school children. He hopes they'll get a sense of some of the great accomplishments of people from this area's past. Because perhaps that will compel them or motivate them to go out and make their own history in a positive manner.